A cool, comfortable night on the way with temperatures falling into the 50s, West River and 40s to the east. But unfortunately, while overall we call it partly cloudy, we are going to be dealing with more smoke in the atmosphere. But the good news is that the smoke will gradually dissipate overnight and through the day on Thursday. So we do get some improvement in place as temperatures also climb up just a little bit. We'll be in the 80s in many locations. We'll talk about the rest of your seven day forecast, including a couple of opportunities for rain on the way coming up in a bit. Until then, first to four starts right now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News, first at four. Smoke from wildfires in Canada filled the skies in Kelloland. How schools are dealing with the air quality issues coming up. Plus, new laws have led to changes as classes start in Minnesota. Why school resource officers won't be monitoring the halls. And high-tech vehicles could be putting your personal information at risk. We're going to explain why coming up. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. New developments today on the future of carbon dioxide pipelines in South Dakota. This afternoon, the State Public Utilities Commission unanimously decided to deny Navigator CO2 projects permit application. That vote came after the commissioners rejected a request from Navigator to preempt pipeline ordinances that had been passed in Minnehaha and Moody counties. Commissioners cited a number of reasons for the decisions, including failing to notify landowners. Not just one or two landowners, 204 landowners were not notified of the public input, and 92 of those landowners were not notified to the road. Kelloland's Bob Mercer looks at commissioners' comments. That's on the Capitol News Bureau page right now. With the future uncertain for the Delbridge Museum of Natural History's taxidermy in Sioux Falls, one man is offering up a building he owns as an option. Owning the building that they came from, it's like, why not bring them home to where they were originally? We can get them here and set them up. Coming up tonight at 6, Kelloland's Dance and Tella will take a closer look at what Sweets is proposing. The Canadian wildfires are affecting our air quality, and that has schools making some adjustments for outdoor activities. Kelloland's summer rotter shot takes us to West Central High School to see how this affects their sports teams. The football field behind me will only have athletes on it for a short time today due to the poor air quality. Right now we are in the unhealthy um, area and basically the um, guidance just says that take more breaks, um, do less intense activities, um, you know, move practice inside if feasible, um, work in shorter amounts of time, um, allowing kids to come in and take a breather in some fresh air, less polluted air. Later hear how and why schools are choosing to limit their outdoor activities. In Hartford, Summer Ottershock, Kello Land News. While some people may be taking steps to avoid the smoke, you may want to think about your pet, too. A veterinarian says there's no need to be scared, but it is a good idea to limit your pet's time outside on days like today. We'll share more advice from the doctor coming up on Kello Land News at 10. Across the country, extreme heat is keeping people indoors. Heat advisories are in effect from Texas to Rhode Island. Many schools and businesses are shutting down because they don't have air conditioning. Well, the heat has not been bad around here, but that smoke, it can you can definitely see it and you definitely yeah. smell it. Kind of smells like a, a, a campfire out there, Adam. Yeah. It almost kind of has that smell to it and... Uh, I think a lot of us would maybe like to see that just uh, give the old heave ho and get that out of here. But we do eventually do that. The key word is eventually until we get to that point where we're going to have to continue to take it easy out there. Here's a view from our camera in Lake Madison. You can see uh, that obscured uh, horizon out there. 70, though. It's a very cool afternoon out there with a northwest wind at 16 miles per hour. And a prime example of the low-level smoke we've been talking about on, at times is out in Rapid City. 78, south wind to 16 miles per hour, but notice that haze just hanging over downtown. And thankfully, like I said, that does gradually get on out of here. But until it does, and yeah, we're going to be dealing with this. Now, the brighter the shade of yellow that you see on the map, the thicker the smoke as we go through the night. But watch what happens as we go through Thursday. A lot of this gets scoured out. That's good news, and we'll continue to see that improve as we go through Thursday, Thursday night, and even into Friday, for that matter. So there is improvement. It's just 
not going to be something that's immediate. Uh, Temperature-wise, though, we've been doing pretty well for ourselves, especially considering what we had on Labor Day. Upper 60s from Brookings to Sisseton and Ortonville, 75 here in Sioux Falls, 72 at the Capitol, 71 for Mowbridge and Aberdeen with a nice uh, tolerable breeze out of the north if you're East River, out of the south in general if you are West River, around 5 to 15 miles per hour. For your day tomorrow, again, not bad, just a bit warmer. 70s and low 80s for much of southeastern Kelowland with less filtered sunshine in place. Same goes for northeastern Kelowland, 70s and a couple of low 80s for good measure. And out west, we'll see a few more 80s out there, even near 90 down toward Valentine. But out toward the hills, we may see a couple of showers and thunderstorms later in the day. We'll also have a chance for rain overnight into Friday, but not for everybody. By the weekend, we get a better chance for a larger portion of the region. We'll go through more details on that and the rest of your forecast as we head through the hour. All right, sounds good. Thanks a lot, Adam. The Biden administration says 4 million student loan borrowers have enrolled in the new income-driven repayment plan just two weeks after it was officially launched. The latest effort from the president is still seeing opposition, though. Yesterday, Senator John Thune joined several other Republican lawmakers on a resolution to overturn the repayment plan. Thune called it reckless, saying that it doesn't do anything to lower the costs of higher education. Schools across Minnesota return to the classroom Tuesday. The new school year comes with several new laws. Barrett Leone takes a look at how the changes impact students in Minnesota. The first day smiles say it all. I have a lot of jitters. There's a lot to to think about, but I, I'm very ready and excited. Across the Twin Cities Metro, learning kicked off with breakfast. Some with a special guest. Good morning. Have a great day. Thanks to newly passed law, all students are eligible to receive one free breakfast and lunch every day, regardless of income status. But new laws are also prompting police departments to pull school resource officers due to wording that says officers cannot use face down holds, including kneeling on a student's neck. Some districts are adapting. So we were able to figure out a plan that um, we believe will best meet the needs of our students and our staff. St. Louis Park Public Schools will swap SROs for juvenile response officers. They'll perform a similar job without a physical presence in school buildings. The value of the SROs in the building is the adult relationships that are built long before anything happens. It's a missing presence walls and other stakeholders want back, even if it takes a special session. Let's find a solution where districts that want and can work out uh, an agreement and that the language is satisfactory to everyone. Because I think that the spirit of this thing is all of us want our buildings safe and all of us want to make sure that excessive force is not used on our students. And I think finding that middle ground um, shouldn't be all that difficult. Barrett Leone, WCCO News. In regards to the law affecting school resource officers, Wall says he doesn't believe the issue should be so complicated and that, to his knowledge, there haven't been charges filed against an officer that's used force on a student in Minnesota.